This video demonstrates measuring pressure garments for the hands. The video will cover three areas, basic measuring procedure, measuring requirements for style variations, and a few common options and features. Section one is the basic measuring procedure. Gloves are hand garments with a thumb and at least one other digit. Gauntlets are hand garments with a thumb and common opening for the other digits. Mittens are hand garments with a thumb and a common closure for the other fully amputated digits. Within these criteria, any combination of digits may be closed or open-tipped, short or long, or reduced to clearance holes. For gloves, two or more digits may share a common opening. Record each measurement on the BioConcepts hand measurement chart. Refer to the measuring manual for an explanation of the shorthand notation system for measurements recorded in inches. Measurements in centimeters are welcome. Simply record in decimal notation, for example, 6.4 centimeters. It is critical to look up the required measurements before you start measuring. We will show the basic measuring procedure for the hand using a glove to wrist as an example. No matter what specific hand garment is intended for the patient, always begin by tracing the hand using the BioConcepts hand tracing guide. Make sure the patient relaxes the hand, and when tracing the hand, it is recommended to use a ballpoint pen filler which can be purchased at any office supply store or salvaged from your own pen. BioConcepts will always check recorded hand measurements against the hand tracing, but can only do that if the tracing received is the same size as the original. Please draw a three inch long line on the hand tracing so that BioConcepts can check it. Use BioConcepts retractable tape for circumference measurements. And remember, never pull the tapes snugly. When measuring the hand, the A1 circumference measurement is one and a half inches proximal to the wrist line. The capital A measurement is the circumference at the wrist line. The capital B measurement is the circumference of the hand at the knuckles with the curve of the palm straightened. The capital C through capital J measurements are circumference measurements of the finger joints. Capital C is the distal joint of the pinky finger. Capital D is the proximal joint of the pinky finger. Capital E is the distal joint of the ring finger. Capital F is the proximal joint of the ring finger. Capital G is the distal joint of the middle finger. Capital H is the proximal joint of the middle finger. Capital I is the distal joint of the index finger. Capital J is the proximal joint of the index finger. Capital K is the circumference of the thumb at the joint. The measurement should be taken around the joint. Hand distance measurements are measurements from the wrist to the web spaces between the fingers. Mark the web spaces on the tracing with a dot. Draw a line from each web space to the wrist line. These lines should be perpendicular to the wrist line. The little a measurement is the distance between the wrist line and the web space between the pinky and ring fingers. The little b measurement is the distance between the wrist line and the web space between the ring and middle fingers. The little c measurement is the distance between the wrist line and the web space between the middle and index fingers. The little d measurement is the distance between the wrist line and the web space between the index finger and thumb. The little e through little i measurements measure the length of the fingers from the base of the finger to the tip. Little e is the distance from the base of the finger to the tip of the pinky. Little f is the distance from the base of the finger to the tip of the ring finger. Little g is the distance from the base of the finger to the tip of the middle finger. Little h is the distance from the base of the finger to the tip of the index finger. Little i is the distance from the base of the thumb to the tip of the thumb. 
If the glove is to have open fingertips, on the little e through little i measurement, mark the desired ends of the fingers on the tracing by drawing a line across each finger at the desired end of the glove. Then, measure the distance from the base of the finger to the desired end of the glove and record the measurements on the hand measurement chart indicated to end of glove. Section 2 covers measuring requirements for style variations. For all glove measurements, take measurements A1 through little i. For mitten measurements, take all measurements except capital C through capital J. If the thumb is to be open tip, don't forget to draw a line across the thumb on the hand tracing. For gauntlet measurements, A, A1, capital B, capital K, little d, and little i are required. If the thumb is to be open tipped, don't forget to draw a line across the thumb on the hand tracing. We move to section three, a few common options and features. Here are a few of our most commonly ordered garment styles and features. Keep in mind, we have many, many more options and features of every style of garment. Consult the measuring manual for more information. This is garment number six, glove to wrist, which may extend to as much as four and a half inches proximal to the wrist. The glove to wrist shown here has a common opening and is open tipped. This is an example of a number seven glove to elbow. This glove to elbow has a zipper with hooks and eyes, which can help the patient put on the garment when unassisted. If the zipper with hooks and eyes or any other option is desired, it must be specified on the measurement chart. This is a number eight glove to axilla. This example has seams in the web spaces to help apply pressure to the web spaces. This is a number three gauntlet to wrist, which may extend four and a half inches proximal to the wrist. The gauntlet in this example has an optional zipper. This number four gauntlet to elbow example has Cylon text lining and a foam pad pocket on the palmer side of the gauntlet. Here is a number five gauntlet to axilla. Garment number six is a glove to wrist which has no band at the wrist, web seams, and bands in the web spaces. This option, glove and sleeve combination, works well for lymphedema patients. A number six glove to wrist and a number two sleeve to axilla made of Luxfab. It has a proximal Cylon band to help hold the sleeve up. The glove has no seams in the web spaces and a neoprene pad on the dorsum helps break up the pouch that often develops on the back of the lymphedema patient's hand. Lymphedema patients should try to avoid web space seams because of possible skin irritation in the web spaces.